everyone. This is the uh, video lecture that goes along with chapter 17 in your book, Physical Development in Late Adulthood. So in this chapter, we're looking at physical changes in uh, adults who are, say, from the age of uh, 60 on up. So middle adulthood was sort of that 30 to 60, 30 to 65 range. Um, now we're talking about people who are 60 or 65 and older. Um, we're turning back to physical development in a way that we haven't um, done in the last few age groups because there is some pretty dramatic change and it helps us to understand cognitive development um, in a way that we couldn't um, unless we understood what was going on in the brain. So um, with this chapter, there are a couple of resources I'd like you to access. One is a longevity calculator. Um, and I don't know if you've thought about how long you'll live. In other words, what age you think you'll be when you die, um, <laughs> obviously. Um, but uh, for some people that's sort of creepy. Um, and for other people, they have thought about it and they've got a number in mind. So whether or not you want to actually um, estimate um, your age of death, there's a longevity calculator that I'd like you to at least look at, even if you don't fill out the information, to see the kinds of things that actuarials um, and uh, insurance companies, for example, use to predict um, and to sort of price for things like uh, long-term care insurance or life insurance or those kinds of things. As you get older, that number will go up. So um, if that number is you know, 80 or 85 or 90 now, if you live to be 60, that will go up a little. And if you live to be 65, it'll go up a little bit more. In other words, the things that were going to kill you before you were 60, if they haven't, um, then you are relatively resilient against those things and it might be something else. So. Um, so look at it, um, take it if you want to, you certainly don't have to. Um, I can tell you, um, based on my grocery list, that just uh, saying a number does not make it happen. So um, don't worry that if you say it out loud that that will actually come true. Um, things don't, that's not how it works. Um, the other thing, uh, the other resource I'd like you to look at is a video about um, aging as a disease. Um, and when you think about aging, we think of aging as being a normal process of the lifespan. And in that, in that sense, it is. Um, but there are things that happen, there are physical changes that happen in, adult, in late adulthood that um, are similar to diseases. And that's what this uh, video that I'm gonna ask you to watch, that's the case that they're making. That, um, you know, we used to die of things like malaria or typhoid or other diseases that we can now prevent and treat. Um, and, uh, and from, from, their, from the perspective of the researcher that's gonna be speaking to you, um, aging is one of those as well. When you think about things like osteoporosis, can we fix that? High blood pressure, can we fix that? Heart disease, can we fix that? And as we start to fix these things, are we able to do even more things? Um, and the case that's being made there is we're going to be expanding the lifespan as we start fixing or addressing the things that people are dying from, the lifespan is going to continue to get longer in a way that it already has, um, and that those uh, incremental increases are gonna be larger and larger. Um, so I'll leave the rest of it for, uh, for you to watch the video. Um, as you're reading through the changes in the brain, um, keep in mind that um, the speed of processing that we talked about in the last section uh, with the Seattle Longitudinal Study um, is related to changes in the brain. And so things are starting to slow down. It takes longer for messages to get around the brain. Um, and so that can change how older people are thinking. If you ask them a question, it takes them a minute to think about the question, retrieve the answer, and so on. Um, so there are those kinds of changes. There are also hearing changes, vision changes, um, and those can give rise to not just changes in, in their apparent cognition, but also in socio-emotional status. So when we think about um, an older person who might be frustrated or grumpy sometimes, um, think about what it's like to you know, go into a room and not be able to see the things that you need to see, or only hear part of a conversation and then try to respond in a, in a uh, useful or intelligent way. Um, so those kinds of things, you know, it's helpful to know what the decrements are so that you can understand how people are thinking and, and why they're acting the way that they're acting. Um, and uh, then uh, theories of aging, the biological theories of aging, um, there's a fair amount of detail in the chapter. Um, I would focus on the section um, having to do with um, the Hayflick limit um, and sort of you know, that idea that um, cells can only divide a fixed number of times. Um, it was Hayflick that found out that only cancer cells are immortal. And the way that he found out that only cancer cells are immortal is by finding out that other cells are mortal, that they can only divide a certain number of times after which it, they will not divide again because they do not want to create a damaged copy of themselves. 
Um, that's way overly simplistic, so don't quote me to your biology teacher. Um, but if you're interested in cellular aging, um, I think that section of the book is really interesting, and that topic is really interesting when you start to think about the research that's going on. So um, that's it for chapter 17. It's a relatively short and straightforward chapter. Um, and next we're going to be talking about cognitive development and then socio-emotional or psychosocial development um, in uh, the last part of the lifespan. So um, have a good week, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.